Hey guys, Klaus here, and today we will be doing draw time. Now this may seem like something super simple, but it's actually takes some sophistication in the thought process. So essentially the idea is if I switch between one gun and another, then it will stop doing the burst firing and it will do a draw time. So if I go switch here and I hit right click, I'm hitting it right now, it's not shooting. Okay, I'll let go and then I'll click it. Now it lets me shoot. Now if I switch and wait a second before shooting, now I can shoot. So that's the draw time. If I do scoreboard of this today's sidebar cooldown, you'll see that when I switch, the cooldown is set to something, right? So you can see the cooldown changing. Okay, so we're gonna be implementing that today as well as fixing uh, the semi-auto. There is a slight adjustment we'll be making and that adjustment will uh, make it so you only need one scoreboard, which is nice. So now we <laughs> switch this lever off and nothing will work anymore. <laughs> uh, it, it will not do the draw time. Okay, so let's get coding. So the first thing, I, in, and in case you didn't notice, basically I code everything twice. So the first thing... So the first thing that you're going to want to do is inside the starter pack, which I'll link again in the description of this video, but there is a loot table that I deleted that we actually need. So it's loot table blocks yellow shulker box, and it's one of the most important loot tables in the game. So we're going to add that here. Loot tables blocks shulker blocks under Minecraft, loot tables blocks yellow shulker box. And what this loot table basically does is it if you have a item that has an MBT of drop contents when you mine a yellow shulker box, then it will drop the contents in that shulker box. So uh, that's just something that's commonly used in data packs. Uh, now let's make the adjustment to the auto fire very quickly because it's very uh, it's a very quick adjustment. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the right click function. We're going to copy this right here and we're going to go into shoot start and we're going to paste it down here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to uh, comment this stuff out. And instead of looking for a score with right click, you just see if you have advancements and that the advancement that you're looking for is gun colon input slash right click equals true which means you have this advancement. Okay, this is nice. Uh, then to remember from the previous tick, instead of doing this stuff here, we are going to just have one scoreboard, which is right click. And what we'll do is we'll go up here and we're going to do scoreboard players operation dot right click gun equals at s right click. So we're going to have a new ad function, uh, a new scoreboard added, but then it will mean that we don't have to do as many scoreboards for other things later. This is just for organizational purposes. You could store this on the stat scoreboard, but now you don't need right click. You don't need two scoreboards for right click. Okay. So this will copy whatever the previous value was and then update the value. Okay. Then inside the shoot start, we're going to change that value to one. So what this is going to do is it's going to use the right click scoreboard to check what the previous value was and update it. Um, and then we're going to use this uh, this fake player to remember what the previous value was so that we can each ticket will set it to zero. And then if you were clicking in that tick, it will set it to one. So we'll do dot right click gun. Okay, so we do all that. We type slash reload and we go uh, scoreboard of the sidebar gun scoreboard players reset star gun okay so uh now if i give at p ender i gun 1b oh this little timer is in the bottom uh okay so if i have the gun then you'll see that it it, it uh will not do anything yet let me do slash advancement revoke at s only gun right click okay so we don't have it in a subfolder that's that's my bad uh, it is, I didn't put it in a subfolder. I put it in a subfolder in my other data pack and change this to if entity, not if score. So now if I right click, you will see that it'll still work again. So I hold it, I'm holding it, I let go, I click it again. There you go. So it works now with only one scoreboard, which is a little bit cleaner. I think you guys will like that better. It took two or three minutes to make that adjustment. Um, I will be including in each video, I think I'll try to do this an updated version of the data pack that is the data pack at the end of that video in the description in case you ever need to reference something to make your adjustments. 
So that's how that works. Now let's deal with the swapping. Now to detect if something swapped, there's a couple of ways that people swap. You can hit F to swap. You can change your scroll wheel, your selected slot, and you can move items in your inventory. And in order to detect these things, you can only detect swapping the items in your inventory with an advancement. So you actually can't do an asynchronous detection. You're going to have to check some kind of MBT every tick regardless. There is no way to make this more efficient. You have it to do at least one MBT check. So because of that, what we're going to do is we're going to check a unique identifier assigned to an ender eye. So each ender eye will get a, u or each gun will get a unique number. And we will just check if that number is the same as the number from the previous tick, which means add one scoreboard to contain what the previous tick was. So first let's give ourselves an ender eye with a unique uh, score value. So we're going to make a new folder called gun. We're going to paste a function into here and we're going to just call this get. So this is where you're going to get a gun. And inside the init function, we're going to set up some initial things. So we're going to do set block zero, negative 64, zero. This is a safe space. You can change the safe space to whatever you want. If it's a map then, or a, a mini game, then this safe space is probably usable. Uh, so you're going to put a yellow shulker box there at the very bottom of the world and you will put a sign above it. Now, if you are concerned, like if you have like a possibility that players could get to this coordinates, you could surround it with, like if you're in survival, you could surround it with bedrock as well. Um, but basically here, so you have a sign and you have a shulker box. The sign is going to be used for, uh, making, building strings and the shulker box is going to be used for building the item. So we're going to do data modify block zero negative 64 zero items and we're going to append something to it and we are going to append a new item that is in slot zero so when you use append if there's something in the array it will overwrite it because this has a slot and it's at the end it will overwrite anything that is currently in that slot if you use prepend it won't overwrite it you have to use append and if there's nothing in it, it will append to the array, so it will fill the spot. So that's kind of the trick to using shulker boxes. You have to use append value and specify a slot. So we have ender i, okay? And then we have a count of one, and we have a tag of gun 1b. So this is a gun, all right? And then at the bottom, we're going to do loot give at p, or at s, mine 0, negative 64, 0, air and the air has a tag of drop contents true drop contents true okay so what this will do is it will uh mine the shulker box and drop whatever is in it and whatever is in it is just that item so if i go ahead and run slash function gun get it will give me uh, a gun so let me you can see that it gives me this and it has the one MBT tag on it. Okay, so now we need unique values. So what we're going to do is we're going to do scoreboard. We're going to do, uh, we're going to put onto the data. So we're going to edit this item. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go to miso.github.io. This is a generator. And we're going to use an item modifier to modify what the item is doing. And we're going to use two item modifiers. So we're going to set the name just because for debugging purposes, so we know what ID it has. Uh, and you have to specify the entity of this. Otherwise, you're screwed. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to copy MBT. So we're going to copy a set of MBT and the context is going to be data storage and the data storage is going to be gun. Okay, and the MBT operations, you are going to replace stats with stats. Okay, and inside the set name operation, we're going to use an object and the object is going to be nbt and we are going to copy text one which is the first text line on the sign at zero negative 63 zero and we're going to interpret that string that's everything you need from here i know that it might need more explanation as to the reason that i put those things there uh, but i'm doing it here just so that i don't have to uh, mess around with the editing so that we go back and forth so let's go item modifiers it's a folder of item modifiers and we're going to shove that in here we're going to call this set mbt Okay, and then we are going to go back into this function that we were at and do some modification. So we're gonna do data modify storage, gun stats, set value, and we're going to put some MBT there of ID. Okay, then we're going to do execute store result storage gun stats dot ID. So we're going to store onto the ID some value that is an integer, and we are going to do scoreboard players 
add hashtag gun dash ID stats one. And the reason I use the hashtag is to hide the score because we don't really need to see it later. We just know that this number is going to continually count up to whatever the max integer is and then wrap to the negative max integer. So you can give your players 4 billion guns before it has any chance to overlap with each other and break the system, which is unlikely to ever happen. Okay, so now that stored on the MBT, and then now we have to store the on the sign the name. So we're going to do data modify block zero negative 64 zero, uh, or negative 63 is the sign. And we're going to set text one. And we are going to do set value. And we're going to put the string that we want to put on here and be evaluated. The reason you use a sign is so that you can evaluate the MBT with for like selectors and scoreboards. In this case, we're going to do score. And we're going to do objective. And we're going to do the objective is stats. And the name of the thing that it is grabbing the score of is hashtag gun dash ID. Okay, and lastly, we're going to do an item modify. So we're going to take these two things that we just set up here, the data and the text on the sign, and we're going to apply it to the item. So item modify block zero negative 64 zero container dot zero is the first item. And then we're going to do gun colon set MBT, which is our item modifier that we have. So I'm going to type slash reload. And I'm going to do gun gets and you will see that now it has a score of nine because in my previous data pack, I used the same naming convention. It would be one for you for the first one. But each time you give yourself a new one, you're going to have another nine, 10, 11. OK, so now we have to read the ID and store what the previous ticks was and then update it. So that's actually very simple. So in the very beginning of our ticking function for each player, we are going to do execute store result score at uh, score dot id stats run data get entity at s selected item dot tag dot stats dot id so that's where we saved it and then we're going to do, do execute if score no unless score dot id stats equals at s gun id run function gun swapped so this means you swapped items and then we're going to do scoreboard players operation at s gun id equals dot id stats so we're just going to basically remember for the next tick what the previous one was or the one that we read in this tick is okay so it's going to check what the current one is versus whatever the one from the last tick is update whatever the one from the last tick is inside swapped we're going to go here and we're going to do some stuff. So we're going to do scoreboard players set at s cooldown zero. So we want to reset all of the stuff that was the gun because you switched weapons. So you're not fire. You're not able to fire it when it's on your hand. So we're going to set the auto fire to zero and we're going to set the auto delay to zero. And uh, then we are going to do scoreboard players operation at s cooldown equals dot draw time stats. And that will copy the draw time. Uh, if there is no draw time, then uh, then let's make a condition here. Execute if score dot draw time uh, score at s cooldown matches zero. So if you don't have a cooldown, uh, it, basically the draw time was not set up. Then uh, scoreboard players operation at s cooldown equals dot cooldown stats just as a safety precaution so if you didn't set up the draw time at the very least they won't be able to like switch back and forth between guns and exploit the cooldown being set to zero okay so that's everything um that's literally everything so now if i just do slash reload okay so you'll see i click and i'm switched before the burst was finished if i if i click it right here it says three bursts, but I switched before the burst was finished. You saw that. Uh, now, another thing, when I switch to it, I cannot click initially. I have to wait a little bit. I just clicked it a couple times. Uh, so if I do scoreboard, I say this, I bar cooldown. You'll see that the cooldown gets set up every time I switch. It will do it even when there's zero. So if you want to have that safeguard, it's not a big deal, but you can do... Uh, nah, you actually do want that. Uh, you do want that behavior. So it'll just... It'll constantly set this cool cooldown. You can have some conditions like uh, execute if the ID is not zero then don't set this up but i'm not going to add that complexity because i don't really care that much uh the it doesn't really matter that much to me to see this when i don't have anything in my hand it's not going to do anything anyways that's it for this video guys that's draw time so now we basically have a way to count uh or 
a way to prevent players from hot swapping weapons and spamming stuff and breaking the logic of the game it kind of adds a protection so that each gun is its own gun even when you switch now we will probably later add a custom scoreboard to replace the cooldown called draw time that behaves as the cooldown or mimics the number for the cooldown when we're doing animations to have a draw time animation but for the most part this is how it's going to work anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you next time peace